If you enjoy the story, give it a like and feel free to leave a comment. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to be the first to hear new cryptid tales. I'm always looking for stories to share, so if you've had your own encounter with the unknown, send me an email at cryptidtellsmel at gmail.com. I thought I'd tell you about something that happened to me when I was a teenager. I would say around about 1972. I lived out in the country area of Bellingham, Washington. Back then, the Bellingham area was pretty undeveloped, and out in the country, you were well away from any city lights or homes, as they were far and few between. As a teenager, I couldn't just let a Friday night pass by without going to town and looking for something to get into. I'd have to walk quite a few miles down country roads to get to the main roads and hitchhike into town. The same on the way back, of course, and it would be pretty late or early morning hours when I would be walking down the country roads going back to where I lived. Late one night, I was making the walk down one of those country roads headed back home. When a few miles from where I lived, there came a loud, big growling sound from just inside the woods about 20 or 30 feet off the side of the road I was on. Then, there was a huge cracking noise like trees being busted off. Needless to say, the hair on my neck stood up and the adrenaline started pumping. I started double-timing my pace away from that area and headed towards home. I knew those roads pretty good and had a pretty good idea of where exactly that incident had occurred. So the next day I went back down there and went into the woods there where I had heard the sounds. And sure enough, there were alder trees, snapped off about three feet off the ground, about a half dozen or so. They were about six to eight inches in diameter, and they were busted off clean like you would break a pencil in half. Now at that time, I was only about 15 or 16 years old, and I had never heard of Bigfoot, so I had no idea what it was or what to think. It was no bear, and there were no cows in those woods, and of course there are no gorillas wandering around in those woods up in that area. And it certainly didn't sound like a bear or a cow, and absolutely was not a gorilla. Nothing I would venture to guess of those could bust off trees that size, clean like that. It was a sound I will never forget. But then years later, when I started hearing about Bigfoot stories, well, I knew exactly what it was in the woods that night. That was a sound I will never forget. My sighting is a short and sweet encounter, one morning from my truck. I won't use my real name, so you can call me Ken. I was born and raised in southeast Alabama. I live in a little town outside of Dothan called Cottonwood. Sasquatch has always fascinated me ever since I was a kid. From classic TV shows like Unsolved Mysteries or In Search Of. But I was never 100% convinced it was real. I became a fan again like most people because of the show Finding Bigfoot a few years back. So this happened in February, I think the 16th in 2018. I worked an overnight shift at my work and got off about 5.30 a.m. My eyes weren't playing tricks on me. I remember not being tired at all. I go to take my usual back road route home where there's never any traffic. I'd say it was around 6 a.m. and the sun was just barely rising. There was an empty cotton or peanut field with no crops or anything, just dirt on my left. And in the far right corner of that field... I saw something. My guess it was about 50 yards away. I was driving past it with my windows down, and as soon as I saw this thing, it caught my attention. I didn't brake, but I let my foot off the gas and started to slow down. There it was, a massive black bulky figure. I could make out that it was kneeling down with its right hand planted on the ground and the other scratching through the dirt like it was looking for something. There was dirt flying everywhere in dirt clouds. Perhaps it was looking for missed peanuts in the dirt. It slowly and smoothly stood up on its feet 
and made its way back to the trees in about three steps. It was the blackest black I've ever seen, had no neck, very long swinging arms. I never saw its face, only its left side and back as it walked away, and all this happened in probably less than ten seconds. After seeing it, it put me in shock and I slowed down even more. Then I said to myself, Holy crap, that had to be a Bigfoot. I blinked my eyes a little bit and shook my head, and by the time reality sunk in, I was probably driving about 10 miles per hour. I looked up in my rearview mirror, and I had another truck riding my tail, so I started to speed up and headed on home. You could say I was a little shocked and had a loss for words. I've only told two other people this, and I'm pretty sure they didn't believe me. I've always wanted to report this encounter to the BFRO or something, but it was so short and fast and I had no evidence or anything, but I'm 100% sure that that was a Sasquatch. With the size and bulkiness of this creature, I guess it was at least seven and a half feet tall and a good four to five feet wide across the chest. That is, unless that farmer who owned that property was out at sunrise just to run his fingers through the dirt or was Andre the Giant and for some other reason wearing an all black bulky onesie with a hoodie and then decided to go back into the woods, then there's nothing else that it could be. I regret not investigating it, but don't know how I'd go about it or doing it without trespassing or knocking on the farmer's door and looking like a crazy person. But without a doubt, I knew I saw something big and bipedal at sunrise in someone's crop field. I'm a 100% true believer now. I'm a young fella from Sweden, so I hope it is okay. So let's get into the stories. The year this story is from is 2015. Me and my friends are often out in the woods, just playing hide and seek or chilling around making small shelters out of sticks. Things young people do here. So this is where it started. Me and my two friends were out in the woods, just trying to find a new place for us to make a tree house for us to hang out in. We headed out to find the perfect place to build the new tree house. After we had been walking for a couple hours, maybe even more, we came to a small field with a small stream running through it. Near the stream, and in the middle of the field, there was this huge and mighty looking tree. Me and my friends all agreed on that this tree was the one, and we were going to build our new tree house in it. About a week later, we brought some supplies with us back to the tree. Some wood planks and a few tools. And man, oh man, it was the worst hike I have ever been on, carrying all those supplies with us. But after a couple hours, we made it back to the tree and began building our ladder. When that was done, we started building the floor of the tree house. This is when we first realized that we might have made a huge mistake. From the woods, about 600 meters away, we heard the loudest scream I have ever heard. It felt like the scream went right through us. I will never forget that scream. It kept going and going. It probably went on for 10 minutes, just this loud, intense screaming. When it finally stopped, me and my buddies looked at one another with wide eyes and started talking about what that animal could have been, and more importantly, what should we do? I don't know how long we sat and talked about it and how we should get out of there, but when we were just about to leave, the screaming in the woods started again. But this time it was moving towards us. Our faces turned white as we looked out towards the location of the screams, because now we could see what was making those screams. 200 meters away from us, we see three huge hair-covered figures coming extremely fast towards us, one of them still screaming at us. What seemed like no more than 10 seconds had passed, and now the hair-covered creatures were just 20 or so meters away. One of my friends passed out from fear, and my other friend was crying and screaming that we were going to die. 
Now the things were directly under the tree floor we had started building. The planks of the floor were probably nine feet off the ground, but I could still see the top of the Bigfoot's head. The figures just stood there, staring at the floor from underneath, for what seemed like forever. Then, I see two big hands reach up and drag my two friends down off of our platform. The friend who was still conscious was screaming and clawing at the wooden floor, helpless to do anything about it. Before I could even do anything, I felt something grab my leg and start dragging me towards the edge of the floor. I think that I must have passed out because I don't remember how I got on the ground. But the thing I do remember is the three big figures towering over me. I laid there on the ground with them just staring down at me. That's when I realized what these things must be. So I started speaking and praying at them to let me and my friends go. After a few minutes of me talking and pleading to this female Bigfoot, they grunted at me and pointed in the direction we had hiked in from. I knew exactly what they meant and what they wanted. I picked up our bags and started waking my friend up who had passed out. I looked at my other friend who was still crying and told him it was time for us to leave, and we did just that. Before we left, I looked at the three Bigfoot one more time. I dug into one of the bags and pulled out some snacks we had brought with us and laid them on the ground. When we were back at where I lived, my friends asked me how I knew what to do and how I knew what those things were. I said that those things were female Bigfoot that probably just wanted us to leave. We were probably in their territory, so we needed to leave. That is the first story of the three I have. I hope that you will share my story so people who have had similar encounters will know that they are not alone.